Warning, the radio broadcast you're about to hear was made by men and for men. It may at times seem a little rough around the edges, brash, and certainly not canonically approved by papal authority. But its content may indeed challenge you to become the man, father, husband God has called you to be. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another week of The Obligation. My name is Jason Murphy. Glad to have you. Hope everyone's having a fabulous week. We are cruising into November. Cooler weather setting in. Time has fallen back. Things are getting a little darker sooner and kind of settling in for that that winter period of time where things get a little cozier, a little slower, a little less sunlight. A little less time during the day to get what we need to get done, but maybe a time for reflection, preparation, a time of solemnity as we approach the first week of Advent coming up in a few short weeks on November 28th. Maybe a time to slow things down a little bit in our lives, look and see where we are with prayer, where we are with our studies, where we are with our relationships with our family, where we are with our relationship, especially with God, making sure we're taking time to study and grow in our faith, that we're not becoming stagnant, that we're planting good seeds this time of year. We know this fall is a great time for planting new seeds of grass that will come back in the spring. It's kind of a time of preparation and Bearing and putting away the things maybe in our lives that uh, we're grown too attached to that are maybe pulling us away from God so that through the death, through the burial of these inordinate attachments, maybe these bad habits, maybe these small little inconsistencies in our life that become habitual, maybe it's time to put them away and as we approach spring and the warmer weather, the, the death of the... It's like a seed, it must die in order that a tree may sprout from it, or an acorn must die in order that a tree sprouts. So let us reflect on that, continually growing forward, continually seeking more. Our Lord certainly seeks and desires more from us. May we also do the same for ourselves. I'm going to talk a little bit today about dreams. Dreams are a normal part of our lives. Some people dream very vividly. Some people don't dream at all. Some people dream every now and again. I myself, for a long period of time, had very vivid dreams. I had sometimes scary and intense dreams where I would wake up in fear, thinking that something was happening. Um, Of course, we have good dreams where sometimes we wake up and want to go right back to sleep and pick up where we left off. And I had an instance the other day during a dream. Uh, My father has passed away back in March of 2020. And I've seen him a few times in dreams. I guess I've desired to have some sort of communication, maybe hear something. I think if we've lost loved ones or friends, people who were close to in our lives that we spoke with or interacted with on a regular basis... Perhaps if they've passed away, you know, we, we seek that that communication and that relationship still. I know for me, it's a it's a daily struggle sometimes just to not have my dad there when I just want to call and say hello, whether, whether I had anything important to say or not. Most of the time, it was just a chat. And there's a lot of time now that I'll find myself, especially when driving. I think when we're driving, we're kind of free and we're kind of in our bubble We're not so distracted where we are when we're at work or when we're at home. I think when we have that drive time, it can sometimes be a a way to reach out and and have that time a little more focused. I know some folks will joke with me and say, oh, I guess you're driving now because you called me. And I say, well, it's just a good time. You know, it just works out. There's no distractions. Don't have to worry about background noise. And I can kind of take time and focus and think on on the conversation. So 
I have many of those times these days, it, it seems, where I'll just, uh, I'll have many things to say and not sure who I want to call and tell. And sometimes I'll call my sister and tell her she got the luck of the draw for the day or my mom or maybe friends that I haven't connected with in a little while. And certainly my wife, of course, I see her on a daily basis, so we we don't lack too much in the conversation piece, but just the day-to-day, the mundane, the just sports, funny things, news items, economy, all those things that I guess you'd imagine. Being able to talk to a close confidant, especially a father or mother, a close friend. So I find myself you know, missing those times. So I think people can also have a desire at times to see those people in dreams. And... I had a few dreams where I've seen my father over the past year and a half or so, but I haven't really had any communication with him per se in those dreams. I would just maybe see an image of him. But a few days ago, I had a dream where he appeared in this dream, and I was very caught off guard because in the dream, I, I knew he wasn't supposed to be there or couldn't be there. He was deceased. And I asked him, I said, how, how are you here? You, you can't be here. And he just, in his funny way, my dad always had this smirk about him, uh, you know, especially in, in silly situations where he wanted to give a, a snarky kind of response. And he kind of looked at me and he said, you're on my time. You're on my time. And it was, even in my dream, I just, I couldn't even put my head around what that meant. And... Shortly thereafter, I woke from the dream and I was still very much uh, engaged in this idea that my dad was there and he had spoken to me and I I began to cry pretty intensely. Um, and it wasn't a cry of sadness. It was a joy being able to see him and appreciate the fact that I can I can have that communication with him, not necessarily just in dreams, but any time. And it got me thinking even more, and I, I began to pray that night. And it, the idea of the communion of saints came to my mind. And that previous Monday, we had celebrated the Feast of All Saints, and then, of course, followed on that Tuesday by the Feast of All Souls. And, of course, as Catholics, we firmly believe in the communion of saints. That is a core belief of us as Catholic Christians. And I begin to meditate some on the communion of saints and those in heaven. And of course, on the Feast of All Saints, we heard uh, from our priests that anyone in heaven is a saint. Not only the saints that are canonized by the church, but all souls in heaven are saints by mere fact of being in heaven. And we know that a saint is nothing more than a sinner who kept trying. And we know, besides our Blessed Mother Mary, there are no other humans in heaven without sin. Humans in heaven that have not committed sin. So I begin to reflect on the fact that if all souls that are in heaven are saints, and if my Father, please God, is in heaven or will be in heaven, then he too is amidst the communion of saints and among those who we will venerate and also petition and invoke for prayers. It just became such a broader spectrum in thinking of it. Because when we think of saints, we think of canonized saints. We think of Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Philomena, Gertrude, uh, you know, all of the litany of saints. We don't necessarily think of ourselves as being able to be saints, typically. And we don't typically think of those around us being saints. Of course, we know that not all people will be saints, So not everyone we know, not all of our family, will be saints. And that's a fact. Even our own sanctification is not guaranteed. 
But if we look at this idea of the communion of saints and all souls that are in heaven are saints, and if we truly believe in purgatory and the remission of sin and the relationship between the church militant, which is us, the church suffering, the souls in purgatory, and the church triumphant, those in heaven, then we have to believe that there is a continual evolving communion, conversation, relationship between those saints and ourselves. It's a remarkable idea. If you really sit there and think about it, it's remarkable to think that anyone in heaven can do just as much in the supplication of prayer and petition before the throne of Almighty God as any canonized saint or any saint that we know out of Scripture. It's amazing. So in this dream that I had, my dad was perfect. I would imagine he was probably in his 30s. Perfect health, just like I remember him when he was in his 30s. Probably probably better. (laughs) My dad was always one fighting the sweets, fighting the donuts, fighting the honey buns, going from diet to diet. You know, that was always a battle he had. So I imagine in his perfected state, he wouldn't have to worry about that. And he would be probably a little slender, probably a little more fit. You know, we think of our Lord died at age 33, the perfect age. You know, our Lord at that age, of course, would have been in you know pinnacle of health. Um, and of course, being in the pinnacle of health to go up against the, the crucifixion and death that he endured. So it, it would make sense that he would be in his perfected and strongest state to endure the harshest elements and conflicts and sufferings for our sins. I had the same kind of thing happen several years ago. I had a friend of mine whose father passed, and about a year after he passed, I had a dream about him. And I saw him, and he was in a suit, and he was young and healthy looking, and At that time, it just struck me that perhaps that was him letting me or us know that he was okay, that he was maybe going from purgatory to heaven. And that stuck with me. But I haven't really reflected that much on that since. So when I saw my father in this dream, in his otherwise perfected state, it was a week after the Feast of All Souls, could it have been his soul journeying and him, in his words, you're on my time, like he chose to come, he was able to come to deliver this message that he was he was good, he was okay. And uh, it got me just thinking more and more. I mean, the, the communion of saints, you know, we could... We could go on that. We could go way on on the communion of saints. Um, But I wanted to just kind of stick here in the area of dreams because I think dreams can be so important. Um, Of course, if we live by these dreams and we are more focused on the dreams than reality, then I think there's a problem. Or if we're expecting to get these visions uh, through our dreams and perhaps we do get some sort of vision or idea uh, and we try to direct our our life by them, I think there could be uh, a danger of being misled because I think we can take these dreams and we can just look at them for what they were and and digest them and have our own opinion of what they may be. Or you could really take it to the next level and you could you know consult dream therapists or dream interpreters, which I think you really might start getting into the realm of uh, palm reading and tarot cards and, and and these type of things that could lead you in a direction that is not compatible with our faith because it sort of takes that faith and it, it, it puts it on ourselves like we we predict this we we manifest this because of our interpretation of it and we lay it out before us so so I think there's a danger there of going to the other extreme as well but it got me looking around so I decided to get online do a little research about dreams in the Bible, you know, different stories, how often it occurred. And according to one site, uh, it looks like there, uh, according to their study, there were 21 dreams recorded in the Bible. 
And these vary all the way from the beginning of Genesis to the book of Matthew in the New Testament. And according to this study here, the dreams took place 10 times in the book of Genesis, once in Judges, once in Kings, three times in Daniel, and six times in the book of Matthew. And I thought that was really interesting. They were split up so much in the scripture. Um, And through those dreams, we look and we have Abimelech's warning. God stops Abimelech, the king of Gerar, from sleeping with Sarah, Abraham's wife. Then we have Jacob's ladder. Jacob sees angels ascending and descending. Uh, Go home, Jacob. Uh, The Lord tells Jacob to return. Uh, Laban's warning. God warns Laban not to bless or curse Jacob. So we go further down and we have the runaway barley loaf. A piece of bread rolls into Mediante's camp and turns over the tents, foreshadowing Gideon's victory. We have Solomon's blank check, Nebuchadnezzar's statue, Nebuchadnezzar's tree, Daniel's four beasts, a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a mysterious beast with ten horns are judged by God, and a son of man is given dominion. The beasts represent four kingdoms. could also represent the four evangelists, I would imagine. And then we have the backstory for Joseph. An angel tells Joseph, the carpenter, not to divorce Mary. Her child is the Savior. Uh, we have Jesus' nightmare. That was Pontius Pilate's wife, of course, had the nightmare about concerning Jesus' trial because she knows he's innocent. So quite a variety there of, of this idea of visions or these dreams um, that you know, maybe gave a, a small foreshadowing or a small premonition of things to come. And of course, we know in the book of Revelation, St. John has many visions about the end times and the rise of the Antichrist. So we've seen all these these ideas, these dreams, and I think it's important for us to at least be aware, at least be aware that there may, you know, sometimes be some meanings behind them. We don't want to get too involved and, and too upset by them or overthink them. But I think in a moderate manner in which sufficient reflection can be taken on the dream and perhaps relate it to things in life, there, there can be some interesting points. And so for me, I'll take that dream and I can't say for sure that that was my dad going from purgatory to heaven. I like to think of that, that that would be true. So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. I like the idea, but I also like the idea even more that it reminds me to communicate with the saints, known and unknown, to ask for the intercession of the holy saints in heaven, and not just those that we know by name. But any saint, maybe a saint out there who's lived the same life and gone through the same trials and struggles that we have. Maybe we seek them out just by idea of of our lives. You know, if there's a saint out there, you know, who, who understands, you know, Lord, please send them my way. I know when I was preparing for confirmation years ago, I wasn't sure uh, who I was going to take as a patron saint. And I had given some thought, and I, I think St. Patrick was on the top of my list. And just from the fact of my last name being Murphy and being Irish, I, you know, I thought maybe St. Patrick would be good. But one day when I was praying about it, I went to the mailbox and I opened the mailbox. And in the mailbox was a letter from my grandmother, who was a devout Catholic. And there was a holy card of St. Jude with a prayer on the back. And it's a prayer that I still know to this day, and I'll pray it pretty much every day. And I took St. Jude as my patron saint in confirmation. I mean, I could look at it and say, you know, this was maybe a direct sign from St. Jude himself, or perhaps my grandmother, or who know, you know, my guardian angel, to help guide me in the path to choose that patron saint. Thankfully, I chose St. Jude, because St. Jude is the patron saint of most desperate cases. And, well, you're listening to him. So again, I think it's important to have this presence of mind, whereas everything is in the presence of God. If we move and relate and live in God's presence, then every instance of of our life 
is reflective of that that presence and it's all connected and it's all part of our walk and our faith so again i think it's important to pay attention to these dreams and perhaps some of these signs but to not get too far wrapped up in them because if we remain in god's presence then we know that all things work to the greater glory of god of course we have you know, multiple scripture quotes regarding the presence of God and and God with us. Uh, We can look at Acts chapter 17, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. Uh, And then uh, another great one in Revelation chapter 3, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. And there are just so many other uh, wonderful scripture quotes about, you know, God continually seeking man and this presence and this relationship uh, in our lives that he desires and he that he he looks to have us uh, respond to. So we live in this presence and we live in this communion with our Lord and all things will work to the greater glory of him. And I think if we pay attention to that presence of God, of course that will help us to amend our lives and live in a manner that is pleasing to him. I often tell my children that, you know, God sees everything and, you know, he hears everything and that's a hard thing for a child to understand, but for us it should be a comfort and a consolation with the trials, the tribulations that we go through in this life to know that we don't go through them alone. Our Lord is there. He is there to speak with us about them. He is there to speak to us and let us you know, hear his guiding words and his message and the Holy Spirit. And he's also there for us to speak to him so that we can you know, receive that, that grace and that communication and that relationship from him. So I think it would help us in some of the t- decisions we make. If we are driving down the road, of course, you know, I've seen the sticker before, God is my co-pilot. I've also seen the ones, dog is my co-pilot, which I'm still trying to understand that one. But if God is our co-pilot and he's there in our car with us, then maybe that'll help us to be a little more patient on the road, a little more forgiving of others a little more careful uh, in our own driving and, and safety and precaution for others. And uh, not just in the car, just where we go. God is our co-pilot everywhere. When we go to the grocery store, when we go to work, when we go to kids' sporting events, if we have that reflection and that, that, and that recollection that God is everywhere and he knows everything, he knows my thoughts and words and actions before they even come to mind to me. He knew us before we were formed in the womb. So he sees this, and he longs for this, and it's important for our kids to know this. This is comforting for our kids. <clears throat> Being a child is uh, lonely sometimes. It's scary sometimes. All this unknown, all this new information coming in, these new situations. But for our children to be able to reflect back and know that, well, mom and dad aren't here, or grandma isn't here, but God is here. And I've spoken to that with my boys sometimes out in the ocean, going fishing, and everything is based on how much experience you have doing it. So I can't say everyone would be the same, you know, all at once. But going out in the ocean and going fishing, we may be 30, 40, 50, sometimes 60, 70 miles out, and I never have a fear. Uh, I always feel like, well, there's the water, there's the clouds, there's the sun. God is here. His creation is here. I'm here in his presence, and I don't feel I'm out in this black hole. For others that say, oh, wow, I can't believe you know, you'd know you be so far out. That just seems so scary. And in a sense, we have fear of the unknown. So if you've never been out in the ocean and you think about nothingness and all you see is water, I imagine that could be scary. But the times that we're out there, there are so many things going on. There's dolphin and there's fish, of course, that we're catching, hopefully. <laughs> there are you know, clouds, beautiful sunrises, beautiful sunsets, there, uh, you know, there's so many different water conditions. There's temperature breaks where there's a rippling that runs for miles where the temperature change, changes drastically and there's maybe a line of grass. So each instance that I go out there, I almost have a visual of a real place because there's so many things out there. We aren't just out there in black nothingness. 
we're out there in God's creation, and of course, God is everywhere. And so I think that relates in our life. If we if we think about, oh, I'm going to this new meeting, and I'm really scared, and, and I start getting all worked up because I don't know who's going to be there, and I don't know where it's going to be, I don't know what it'll... I don't know what will be discussed. But if we handle these situations in our lives, similarly to the way I'm speaking about being out in the ocean, if we look at everything as an opportunity to find God in those situations, because he is always seeking us to find us, I think it will change our perspective. So if we can take that out into the world and Remember that He is with us. Remember that He is there always, and He knows our thoughts and our words and our actions, and He hears everything and sees everything. It can be comforting, and it needs to be comforting for us. We need to to find Him in the small and large instances of life. So I guess in summary, let's not get too worried about what is going to be in our dreams, and let's not be too worried about the signs that may come or the miracles that may come in our life. But if we slow down and remember that in all things, God is with us at all times, in all places, such a comfort and such a joy it would be to go through the days of our lives with that presence. And also remembering the great tenet of our faith regarding the communion of saints, these blessed ones in heaven, not only canonized, but those who, like us, walk this earth in sin and change their life and found new life in Christ through the remission of sin and the life of grace to grow with our Lord, walk with our Lord while here on earth so that once they pass from this world to the next, they will walk with him for eternity in heaven. We're once again out of time. We've covered a lot of ground and still so much left to dive into. I pray that everyone has a great week and work on seeking God in those small and large instances of life so that we will recognize him in all instances of our life. Just a reminder, the registration for the Catholic Men's Conference of the Carolinas 2022 edition is open. Go online to www.catholicmenofthecarolinas.org. Use the promo code radio and save $5. Also, we are in the midst of the fall fundraising pledge drive. Carolina Catholic Media Network needs your help. If you're enjoying Catholic content and Catholic media, Catholic news and perspective, we could really use your support, firstly in prayer, but but secondly, with monetary donations and helping us keep this wonderful content on the air and available to the Catholics of the Carolinas. You can go online to carolinacatholicradio.org. Click that donate button, and we would greatly appreciate it. For the Catholic Men's Conference of the Carolinas, the Obligation Radio Show, and the Carolina Catholic Media Network, my name is Jason Murphy. God bless, and esto vir.